tell. Why are you all waiting there? Wh what, what are you waiting on? I don't understand people in these horror movies. Dude, you see something crawling in front of the door, you're gonna stand up. Regardless if it's a person playing a prank on you or not in the situation, what on earth would possess you to stand up there and just watch and wait to see what happens? Are you- Maybe from a, a movie perspective, we have to see the protagonist looking at something, such as the monster, and then see monster that they're looking at to understand the story. I mean, if this monster is, in fact, after them, they, in shock, have to see this monster. And then, you, you know, for us to see what they're looking at. So it's the simpler of seeing the character than seeing what that character's perspective. When it comes to, you know, shot angles, camera angles. And also, common sense dictates that if you're in shock, you're not going to move just out of fear for at least a few seconds. Then, when the thing starts chasing after you, you know the one. Just kind of how it works. It's kind of like seeing a dog being scared of it and then running away. You ill? This is this is the survival of the fittest thing. Even if you can't see the blurry apparition of something crawling and creeping through the door at you in the middle of the night when you already in fear should be enough to send you hightailing it out of there. So first of all, we don't know how often they've seen this monster. This monster could be the first time they're seeing it, in which case, first is a matter of shock and believability. If do you believe it exists? you can't believe what you're seeing. And so it's not just feel, it's also you're questioning if what you're seeing is real. We do that all the time. If somebody, if somebody, all of a sudden a stranger was in your house wearing a world mask, you would question what you're seeing. And then you probably did need one, especially if they chase after you. If he or she chases after you, that's what this is going on here. But let's just wait and see what happens. <sighs> much time they have why are you still standing there what, what are you waiting for you want to see if he's going to offer you some insurance what are you smoldering for the freaking camera stop will you not just show the clip no not stop go you idiots this is why i don't feel bad for people in these horror movies when when they do stuff like this you're just wishing for them to die because of course she would say that because you're not the character in the movie that's going through that that horrific moment Obviously, that's what they want. There's nothing wrong with your grown ass men. There's no reason for you to be just leg locked and miss me with that whole, well, they're frozen in fear. Well, they deserve to die. If their natural instinct is to freeze when their lives are in danger, you don't want them passing down that personality trait to the rest of humanity. Because then all of humanity will just die out. Before we had medicine and everything and we domesticated ourselves, people who got leg locked and shell shocked like this, guess what happened? They died. They didn't procreate. And the rest of the people who learned how to run and be fit they survived and passed on their genes there's something to be said when people always say they don't make him like they used to i got so frustrated with ads on youtube i was watching more commercials than content privacy so ad blocker was a oh, game changer never, insulation was a breeze and it actually worked how long does the scene have to go? This, this is like a whole 40 seconds of this. I have a question, I have a question. Why is the monster even walking slowly? Does he know they're afraid? Is that why? Is that why dogs do it? Why is it chasing after them? I mean, it is a typical scary movie uh, tactic to do. What's going on? <laughs> now it's in the light, now you can see. like that that is not the sound i expected to hear coming out of that that's, that's <laughs> weird yeah that's weird definitely i didn't expect it either <laughs> what what respect for them locking the door though you know how many movies i watch where people are running and they don't lock the doors i mean this door might as well have been a sheet of paper but it's still at least they made the attempt <laughs> <laughs> the sound effects. It's not the worst VFX I've seen for this. It has to be like a person making that noise. This type of movie, but damn, T series, seriously. <laughs> to at least make it sound more modern. The voice just swallowed a freaking barrel of his posture. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> His posture. <laughs> Dude, is he okay? <laughs> You're taking so long to react. You could have been alive. You could have. But the masculine monster with the voice of a father playing hide and seek. <laughs> Finally, it took you forever to run. Why did it take you? <laughs> some special effect did they forget to add the special effects what is that what is furniture really no. for a while but not the noise accompanied with the screaming of the two humans their blood curdling help me screams <laughs> you know at least she has a little bit of self-preservation like they're just the physics don't fit <laughs> Look at that. He looks like Danny Glover a little bit. <laughs> he could just black like let me let me fail as a species if we no longer respond to danger. Like we're way too safe. <laughs> oh my god, I'm done. I can't. <laughs> This, this, this sense. Unless he was willingly sacrificing himself. How? How did he get over there so fast? How? I mean, the man's doing a better job, but the woman looks like she only had two hours to rehearse her scenes. And she looks like she doesn't want to mess up her foundation or something. And this is the result. You know? So this thing was chasing them down pell-mell. And now that you have them dead to rights, why are you why are you moving so slowly? Maybe it likes the girl or something, but still. You could move quickly so they don't run away or again. The, the, monsters are so stupid. I hate any of these movies when they'll be chasing someone like their life depends on it. Then you got them cornered and you're like, I'm just gonna take my time and uh Actually that's what certain fold animals like cheetahs and tigers and lions do. They chase after the target. Actually, they do pounce. They do kind of pounce on them. But they'll get them in a corner somewhere, and they'll just walk up slowly because they're enjoying the hunt. They're taking a little entertainment out of what they have before they devour the meal. It's pretty common in predatory versus prey. I mean, you know. You guys have like two seconds to run, and if you don't, then I'll wait another ten seconds for you to run. Or until somebody else just happens to come out with their primal torch stick and say, Back, you monster! Back, I say! <laughs> I can't help but laugh when I look back at movies like this, that this was scary or if it was just like underhanded comedy. I want to look at more of her content. I just. Well, let me put it this way. All motion. energy in the universe is expressed in motion. All motion is expressed in waves. All waves are curved. So where does the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids? There are no straight lines. So when I took the flower of life and opened it properly, I found a whole new wave conjugations that expose the in-between spaces. That's, it's a thing that holds us all together. Uh, we're I didn't, I didn't do up, too well right. in trigonometry. Uh, what is the, the Platonic fact? solids? <laughs> He lost me at opening the flower. Opening the seams. Now, I'm not a mathematician, so this stuff is going right over my head, but I definitely know that one times one doesn't equal two. Okay. Was a communist spy. Sounds intense. <laughs> this is your assignment to see it through. How did you become this? Richer than the Emperor himself. Visible to the eye. Watch. I've messed you. Dude. Hmm. Dude, how long have you been standing there? An hour. An hour? I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. Watch. We're gonna be talking about Dune. I have been wanting to watch this movie for <laughs> years. Years. Centuries. And I'm like, okay, you know what? The next movie's coming out. Might as well get off my ass and start watching it. Because everyone's on that Dune Ussie. Sorry, that's so <laughs> Let's go. So there's this narration and exposition about this emperor, and there's these sand people on this planet, the whole bunch of dunes on it, which is I'm guessing what the name Dune stands for. Oh snap, I just realized that 
Dune is spelled with a whole bunch of the same shape in different directions. For a lot of this character's runtime, he's having this wet dream about Zendaya. And apparently Zendaya is into him too. What would Tom Holland think? Oh! He doesn't know what these dreams mean, but gotta be important. And his mother, I gotta say, she's kind of funny. Silo, but... tries to teach him all these magic tricks, like using the voice. Give me the water. A dick. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? With great power comes great responsibility. Where is she? I like how the mother's like, <laughs> that was cute. You almost did it, but she didn't. Like, really? What is this preacher? <laughs> okay, so first of all, the voice is very unique to the character. He has the ability to control people by using his voice, which he inherited from his mother because typically women, typically the women have it. He belongs to a certain clan or tribe of women which is basically called the Bene Gesserit. They have the ability to control people with their minds, with their voices. And men typically don't have this ability of the voice. But he, Paul Atreides, has, well, he's pretty much inherited from his mother. <laughs> Paul of Atreides. He reads a lot. And he's dreaming about the girl, the Fremen, or Freeman, or whatever, however you, whatever, it doesn't matter. We learn that Spice is the driving force behind this movie. He has this. For the Fremen, Spice is the sacred hallucinogen, which preserves life and brings enormous health benefits. For the Imperium, Spice is used by the navigators of the Spacing Guild to find safe paths between the stars. Without Spice, interstellar travel is impossible. So Spice is the most valuable substance in the whole universe. But you'd think with how valuable it is and how advantageous having the health benefit effects are, people would put a little bit more time into ensuring that the mining process is as efficient as possible. We'll get to that later. I love me some sci-fi, but just to break it down, this is like hyper-religious with all these messianic prophecies. We've got the main character's mother, who's a member of the Many Gesserit religion. Let's just call it culty witches. And Paul's father, who is a good and fair leader. The emperor is envoy is like, listen, the desert planet over there where we mine the spice, we want you to take control of it. Then we got Aquaman, Call Drogo, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. And if you're in Newfoundland, you come down to Jack Axis. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> So this guy's name is Duncan, and Paul, our main character, tells him, I've been dreaming about you, baby, that you die and shit, so can I come with you? Uh, fuck no. <laughs> then we get a minor flashback to his dream of Zendaya, and it I'm like, happen. bro, <laughs> we're talking about Duncan's death, and you gotta think about Freeman Puss in the same recap? That's like me being scared that one of my brothers is gonna die, and then remembering my wet dream alongside his death. Like, time and place. And I know your arguments are probably gonna be, Well, he didn't like the girl, let's see her like that. And I'm sorry, I beg to differ, but even if that were the case, it's just weird, him thinking about Duncan's death, and then thinking about her in the same line of thought. You know, weird artistic choice, but whatever. No, you're gonna die! You are gonna die! I guarantee it! We get some dreary scenes, it's like they're shot out of an AI music video about emo feelings and depression. Paul and his father are at the graves of their forefathers, talking about their futures. And Paul basically doesn't want to become the next ruler and his father's all like, I was like you when I was your age. If you don't want to do it, I love you anyway. <laughs> right, okay. There's some strong reverse psychology there. How many times do we have to tell you? <laughs> I always wondered why people do those exaggerated moves. Like, it looks cool, but in the time you're spending doing your triple pirouette or whatever the hell move that is, somebody could just slice you in half and swing their sword. They're like literally looking at you, watching their watch, and wondering if you're done what the frick you're doing. Like, look, you spin the sword, and then half the time the sword, while you're turning, the person can just shove you in your groin with their sword. Like, you, you waste all that energy turning the back on the enemy momentarily so that they can have a chance to kill you. Like, it doesn't make it. Not really. If he does it fast enough, they don't have time to react. Any sense. Like, people get away with that in anime, but I don't think... They Look at me. Bro, you're splitting there going... No, what? They're, you're falling now. The minute you touch the ground, you're dead. Dude, your pelvis is split open like that one guy in that video of that ski guy. I wish I didn't see that video. Holy shit. At my worst, I was sugared. We're gonna find her other videos. I, I, I want to see how she thinks this is dumb, because this was. I mean, it wasn't the best movie. There was some things I found wrong with it. Some shit I talked about it, but I, I won't go out and say it's dumb. 
Who's inside a cage right now? I saw Abigail in theaters and good lord, twould have been better if I hadn't seen the trailer because they gave away the very obvious twist of the movie. Don't get me wrong, I kind of- Okay, so in, in, the, in the one about Civil War, Just play the video. I've enjoyed it, but seriously, most of the buildup for the movie was predicated on the fact that the main characters, who were actually thieves and criminals, had no idea as to the true identity of the little girl that they kidnapped. So I gotta say it, okay. So in, in the, the, the trailer for Civil War, she bitches about how the trailer misled her and was false advertisement and led her the wrong way. Now she has a trailer that is actually showing her what the movie is going to be about, and yet she's telling exactly how she didn't like it because the trailer revealed too much of the movie. Pick a side, man. What do you, what do you want? Now, I can't help but thinking the movie would have been even more rewarding had we not been spoiled in the trailer. These movie creators need to understand that it's okay to subvert expectations when it's a trailer. You can still show what the film is about without actually showing the twist. That would have made this so much more enjoyable. And most of the movie was actually pretty... I'm not gonna... Which the film is about. It's okay to subvert expectations when it's a trailer. You can still show what the film is about without Without actually showing the twist. That would have made this so much more enjoyable. And most of the movie was actually pretty... I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty stupid. It's really so stupid. <laughs> No surprise, surprise, the girl is a vampire, and they realize pretty quickly that they have captured a vampire. They know that there's a vampire, or before they know it's her, that there's something loose in the house killing all of their comrades. What do they do? They decide to split up several times in this movie for no freaking reason. I mean, aside from the lovable Elon Musk doppelganger right here, none of the characters are very likable at all. It's entertaining and comical, and I think what really- You know, she shows her age when she can't get the actor's name. I mean, she doesn't know who they are. Now, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but at least I can look it up. You know, I could look it up with his name. Just look up the film Abigail. You got a goddamn computer right there, bitch. Sorry, it went too far. Uh, how do you spell Abigail? Okay, okay. Let me Give me this. I'm going to my computer to load because it's a piece of shit. Uh, okay, his name is... Oh, Kevin Durand. That plays the character Peter. Abigail, played by Alicia Wheel. Joey, played by Melissa, Bo played by Melissa Boyle. Uh, Frank, played by Devin Stevens, who was in the Godzilla X Kong. Sammy, played by <laughs> Sammy <laughs> Civil War, <laughs> played by Catherine Newton. She's actually known for Supernatural. And Wickles, played by William Catlett. Now I may not be able to pronounce the names right. I mean Angus Cloud. Playing Dean, not Dean Winchester, mind you. Um, but in Lambert, played by Kekolio Expedito, whatever his name is. Okay, so I might not be able to pronounce some of these names right, but at least I can look it up on IMDb before I start saying Elon Musk counterpart or, or Doppelganger. Really helped make the movie was the Bradley Cooper look-alike that looks like he ate the real Bradley Cooper for Bradley Cook breakfast and Elon Musk XL. The other charming ghetto guy gets killed off right away. Even though there were some funny things with him too, he was comic relief without trying See, to be. When you, when you don't know the actors, that shows the audience that you, you didn't. You don't like the movie. And you don't respect the movie, but you don't even respect the act of the art of movie reviewing well enough to watch the movie and give us accurate names. Be comic relief. I mean, I've seen plenty of people that say bad things about movies, especially most notably with the the um what's that movie called um the, the Strangers Park Chapter One. They've talked shit about that movie to the point where I I don't want to go see it. But at least they have the characters and actors' names right. And this is supposed to be like the main, main character, but she's an awful person too, but they don't skirt around that issue. Then we got the vampire girl who I guess just wants attention and doesn't actually kill them quickly because she likes to play with her food. The other thing I find very interesting is 
I'm looking back at the trailer, and not one time, unless I missed it, at not any point in the trailer do I see the black dude. Like, he gets killed off pretty early on, obviously, but they show old gangster guy here getting killed, but okay. they don't show the black dude anywhere. And I'm not talking about Gus Fring, because whatever with him. And so we know from the trailer, when you're watching the movie, oh, that the guy's obviously dead, or he's gonna die pretty early on, because he is nowhere in the fr oh, spoilers, but anyway. And she charges him, and I'm thinking, does she understand that he's a vampire? I'm thinking she does. Why would you do that knowing he's way more powerful than you? She said she is centuries years old. He turns into a vampire, and now he wants to kill a main character here, which, you know, spoilers, but anyway. And she charges him, and I'm thinking, does she understand that he's a vampire? I'm thinking she does. Why would you do that knowing he's way more powerful than you? She said she is centuries years old. She's not a little young whippersnapper here. She's an old ass vampire in a kid body. So she should have enough experience to understand that new vampires are unpredictable or when a new vampire has been turned and she charges after him like she's freaking stupid. Then I- Okay, okay, so first of all, this is a twilight where the new vampires are stronger than the already vampires because their body hasn't completely adapted within the first year. And he's not way more powerful than her. He just so happens to be taller and then he has that aerial advantage of her. And also she's probably tired and has it healed or whatever. But that doesn't mean she can't fight with him. She can fight him because she's been in the business for a good long minute compared to him. She's a centuries old vampire compared to his being new. I shit you not. I mean she has powers and abilities that that that, that Dan Stevens character is not quite aware of because he's not as old and experienced as a vampire as she is. She teams up with the female main character because you know girls can't stay evil and e now that's the part where I laughed when they team up because it's like I need your help. <laughs> Together we can defeat him. <laughs> what do you think about it? You know? Two women against one man. Even though this vampire has killed all of her comrades, the main character decides to trust the female vampire so they can work together to kill the comrade, discount Bradley Cooper, that is now turned into a vampire himself and is having fun. And she states, if you help me kill him, I'll let you go. And then all of a sudden, we forget that she is a sinister, malevolent... She kind of has no choice at this point vitriolic, Neither ravenous creature that just had fun playing and torturing everyone else, including the black dude who was nowhere to be found in the trailer that the main character girl liked. And she's just like, I ain't no thing. And the vampire's like, oh, cool, we're friends now. I'm so sorry. Like, I'm just like, what in the world? Like, what? Why? Why is acting like that, out there? Her okay. food. It makes no sense. The lamb chop was here for me. You weren't. Like, that make what kind of writing was that? This is so stupid. This was so stupid. And they had I a good freaking others. evil. And she toyed with them as well in this movie. But oh no, let's make her redeemable at the end because it's not her fault. Then she and the main woman character become friends because they're both girls. I don't get why she sees the father and the daughter stand. But then the ending, this whole, let's redeem the villain, and they were good all along, and it's not her fault because she's just a girl. That shit's gotta go. She wasn't really good all along. She just had a change of heart. Because we see at the beginning that... See how I'm using the iron to be shit about it? Melissa Boyle's character, Joey, actually does spell Abigail. She doesn't kill her and she actually helps her and she keeps them from killing her. Like, there's a point at the beginning of the movie, earlier on, Frank wants to hit her over the head to knock her out, but Joey stops him, saying, no, you don't hit a kid. That shows Abigail that she has some humanity to the, where she can remember to where she spells her life because obviously Joey is different from everybody else in her crew. She has, she still has her humanity, plus she has a son. And she wants to be there for her son, despite her mistake. Well, Abigail was like, my father was never really there for me, but you want to be there for your son. Make sure you are there for your kid. That's why she spells her, because she sees that she could be, she's humane, and she's humane in a way. And this shows that you have not really watched the movie. Or maybe you watched the movie, but you still don't understand it. I, I, I knew it was not my favorite horror movie. It's one I actually liked, but... If I want to talk about a movie, regardless of whether I liked it, I'm going to make sure I get the facts first. 
Oh. Let's get the old horror movies back. I feel like our parents and grandparents had better entertainment in that regard. I'm looking back at these old movies and it made way more sense those characters and they remained evil. If they have a certain template for their character in the beginning, it doesn't just flip 180 and become this teddy bear by the end unless there is a reason for that. There is another ulterior motive. But nope, she's just a sniffling little sweet little girl in the end and I was just trying to get attention. I'm broken inside. Oh, give me a freaking break. This movie was so freaking annoying. But you know what? After I wasted my money on watching Civil War, anything that comes after that that I watch in the movie theaters is better than the money on watching break. This movie was so freaking annoying. But you know what? After I wasted my money on watching Civil War, anything that comes after that that I watch in the movie theaters is better than that. So it was already a better experience and I felt better for watching it. It did have me laughing, but it is in no way one of those movies that I'll refer to people and be like, this is a great watch. Go see this. Nope. Glad we got it for the matinee price. And can we get some freaking Skinwalker horror movies that are actual horror movies that people can feel fear from? I remember the last video that she does like is a movie that she does like uh, and let's just see let's see let's see the playlist here okay maybe we can see what she says about madam web you know youtube music premium is an experience that gives you complete Ads. control of your music so you Fill me with barbecue sauce. Madame Webb didn't expect that this movie was going to be anything. And I made a video about the trailer, reacting to the trailer. And I feel so delighted because honest review about this movie because good Lord. I, one of the things I'm gonna be honest about is I didn't shell out any money for this. Um, I was afforded the opportunity via someone else to be able to watch this movie in double speed, which is what made it mildly entertaining. Cause if I had to sit through the entirety of the movie, I think I would want to drown myself. <laughs> one thing I gotta say though, the acting is just weird. The dialogue is weird. The actresses play the main characters aren't as horrible, but they've got this whole three little kittens thing going on, which is just, it's just forgettable. To be quite honest, it's forgettable. Hey, she didn't watch the movie at the normal play speed. She didn't watch all of it. Once again, can't talk about it. The main plot of the movie is this woman who was pregnant, it's not revealed until later that she's pregnant, is in the Amazon with this guy trying to find some spider. And when she finds the spider, and she shows the research group, he kills the research group, and she tries to battle him for it, which is, you're wondering at this time, why would you risk your pregnant child to battle this man for it? You know, like it's clear she's pregnant and you're putting yourself in danger this way. But it's revealed later why. The woman is taken away by some spider people. <laughs> Can't and they take name. her to this place where they deliver her child. They make a spider bite her for the role. Maybe because they knew this movie was a throwaway movie. And she's a throwaway actress. I know that sounds horrible. It could have been. Could've Interesting. Been. Wow, was it that the main character? Or what is her name? Wow. I just watched the movie and I forgot her name. Interesting. Wow, was it that bad? No way. Her name I don't is... actually come to think of it. Ben is the only name I remember because I made the connection that he's Uncle Ben at the end of the movie. People probably caught it beforehand. I didn't. I just thought he was some random guy named Ben because I wasn't taking anything seriously in this movie. And then we find out that it's actually Peter's uncle. That's how I remembered his name. But everybody else in this movie, including the main character who was in 95% of the, the scenes, I don't remember her name. They were yelling it at the end of the movie. What was it? Cassie. Cassie, pretty sure that's what it is. Cassie. Cassandra. Cassie, Cassie, Cassie. What were the other three people's names? Don't know. Don't care. So she's all upset because her mom didn't love her even though she died during childbirth, which is how could you blame your mother for something like that? But she has an accident on the job and she almost dies. And she, there's this vision and this web thing and then she throws up water and she's like, I'm okay now. After that whole ordeal happens, she can now see a few seconds into the future and it almost feels like deja vu, but it isn't. She can actually literally change the future because she knows about it beforehand. But it's a very gradual thing. Meanwhile, the evil do, the evil spider in the nick of time because she has the power. Recounting this whole thing is just boring me, to be honest. The guy recognizes through his assistant who apparently is a freaking AI person not really but she can hack into every single camera in the country and she never sleeps <laughs> she is used to track down these people the computer girl Doesn't finds out that sleeps. this woman is cassie webb madam webb get it how convenient 
and she mom was in Peru and this guy's connected to her mother Please somehow and she meets the fire accents. people who knew what happened as a result that led her mom to go to the Amazon turns out the baby had some kind of illness and the mother was trying to find a cure hence why yes That's why she has those appendages. She's fastened a spruce suit out of it. This is a place for... What does that have to oh. Kind of like, you know, Professor Xavier's uh, wheelchair. The one that hovers. Not the wheel. Peter is having Peter Parker. We don't know that yet, but we make the connection. The movie makes the connection later. And then she goes to save them, so she steals an ambulance. I mean, she's stealing freaking cars up and down this place, and nobody cares. There's no cops anywhere. It's like they don't exist. The paramedics answer a call to save somebody else's life, and she's like, you know what? Sucks to be you guys. I'm on a so, mission. So this woman, that this person that makes these reviews, she's just doing it for views. She, 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 she's not... She doesn't even know what she's talking about. She, 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 she does it... <laughs> she doesn't have background on what she's talking about. She doesn't know enough about Madame Webb. She doesn't know enough to critique the movie. She can't even. She can't even. We can't. We count or we call the actors. The actors' names. The characters' names. Um, she can't even accurately say what happened in the movie because she once again did not watch it to the full length and she walked it at double speed. How can she really assess the movie? Should let me take the ambulance after she took the taxi that she took uh -huh. through a billboard. Uh -huh. Are you ready to Once fight? again, I never thought I would. Jump. I never thought I'd be happy to see you. Heads up! Well, <laughs> to now dodge out the way from things because Cassie knows where he's going to be on the billboard. So she's like, come on, come on. This guy knows she can tell the future. You're just gone. I don't know what happened, but he just stopped having powers conveniently. So that plot, <laughs> then he falls and he's still alive, but then he has time to notice that the sign is going to fall on him and he screams instead of doing the Spider-Man thing and rolling out the way, or I don't know, holding it up like Peter Parker did because Peter Parker had the strength to hold back a freaking train and to fall from very tall heights and do all that lift up a sign that's very techniques that are from the sign flying. I kind of don't want to watch any more of it. Uh... She had one more week. I'm trying to find something more we said. Okay, so. <laughs> I have a lot of videos. Is a rapist. Godzilla and Kong Empire, a movie that has so much world building that it's impossible not to go back several times and just keep seeing more things that you missed when you've seen it the first time. One of the things that people pointed out that I did see, I didn't mention it. As a matter of fact, I think I mentioned it very early on before I even saw the movie was that the little ape, who people are now calling Suko, has red hair, and so does our antagonist, Scar King. We see most of the adult apes do not have red hair. Red hair is red not fall. something common red to fall. them. And you may just think that maybe it's like some of us when we have a different color we hair. We do not call it hair, we call it foal. When we're babies. And then as you grow up, your hair changes in texture. Maybe it was wavier when you were little. Maybe it was blonder or browner. Maybe it was black and it turned brown when you got older. And that's kind of the same thing that's occurring with the baby apes in this universe. However, we know that part of that's not completely the case here because Scar King himself is an adult, I believe, older than a lot of these apes, and he has red hair. Not to mention, I think 
Scar King's presence in Godzilla and Kong Empire is an allegory for people that own... Slaves! Just say slaves! I mean, it's almost to the point where they're on the nose with this. We don't exactly know what breed of Kong or Simeon Scar King is, but we're looking at him and his features, and he definitely looks much different, not just in color, but also in his facial structure than Kong's family. Kong is more muscular, taller, heavier, and looks more gorilla in nature, while Scar King looks less like a gorilla and more like either an orangutan, maybe some of the inspiration for the red hair, and much longer arms, or some kind of spider monkey. I would lean orangutan because the only ape I've ever seen that looks similar to this are orangutans. Just look at these dapper red ape gingers. Look at the long arms. They've also been known for getting their way by holding humans hostage when they want something and threatening to make their lives very uncomfortable if they don't give them that thing. So in other words, woman, you come with me and stay with me. I will not let you go. And somebody else, I have her ransom. Keep feeding me until I'm satisfied and then I'll let her go. Or threatening to pull people in and bite them when you're teasing them a little bit too much and taunting them. <laughs> Just kick him in the face. <laughs> hey, got loose. That's like scary. To a toast. It's pretty scary. To my family. Bro almost lost his toes for content. <laughs> but aside from the very rare footage that we get of orangutans acting badly because people are invading their territory or keeping them in cages, they're actually quite peaceful. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Oh. Oh. Jesus Christ. Oh. 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 Unless you try to mess with them or steal from them or bother them or if they're just not feeling very good that day. How many times do people have to explain to people, don't mess with gingers? It's not that they don't have any soul, they have way too much of it than anybody else and they would gladly snatch yours. I thought it was very fitting yeah. that they put Scar King as the villain in Godzilla and Kong Empire. I think the other reason they did this also was because he's the villain, he's red in anime. Whenever someone has red hair or has red eyes, there's a lot of passion, rage, anger, and power. Then again, it can also symbolize bravery and love and all that jazz. What we see red in this movie clearly means antagonist, or it could just be marketing. But again, back to genetics. Ah, oh, here we go. For human She's beings, weird, it's weird, orange hair, red hair or as we call it gingers this is a recessive trait it is said that one to two percent of the world population only appearing with greater frequency to two to six percent among northern or northwestern european people have this recessive trait what this means is if you have someone with black hair or brown hair and they have a baby with someone who has red hair more than likely the kids are going to come out with black hair the black hair gene is stronger the only way the kids are going to come out with red hair more than likely each time is if both parents parents carry the trait for the red hair gene. So even if you have black hair, because you have a recessive gene or somewhere in your ancestry, someone had red hair, you were carrying a sleeper gene, which means that if you mate with someone who also is carrying that recessive gene, or they had someone in their ancestry with red hair, or if that person has red hair, well, you have higher chances of your babies coming out with beautiful red locks. This opens up a deeper conversation about the whole Kong thing with Scar King, which I'll get into a little bit later. But we've seen in Godzilla and Kong Empire that all the other apes have black hair, and this simian is the only one that has red hair. Clearly, he's a different breed of ape. I think they're a similar species or the same species because they are able to breed with each other. And from what I've noticed, with Scar being a slave owner and everyone bowing down to him in fear, and all the newer kids looking like they have red hair, it only stands to reason, based on what we know about the whole slave thing, that most likely Suko and all the other baby apes we've seen here, we've seen a few of them being held by their mothers, are sired by Scar King, which would make sense. 
because that's what happened in time gone by. I bet a lot of Americans can trace their lineage, no matter what color they are, back to some dude who owned a bunch of people and slept with them, even though presumably he thought they were animals though, right? But they weren't animal enough for you to slide in them walls, were you? Same thing with old Scar King here. Clearly, he thinks of these apes as beneath him. He probably outsmarted them and thinks that, well, y'all are big and built for work. So since I'm the one who's got the leash for that dog, you're all gonna do what I say. And they're terrified because nobody can fight that thing. And he's also a good fighter, so even if they tried to get it from him, even though they could literally all gang up and get it, but they're more human in that someone shows power, one person, and most people are not willing to resist because of the sheer fear of what this person can do or loved ones that you're afraid of getting hurt because you resist. So he has this, and of course, he feels like he owns these people. He has them working and doing God knows what. I didn't really understand what it was they were supposed to be building. They were moving rocks, but you don't actually see them building anything and there's no big structures down there that look as though they were recent or in the middle of being built so I was a little confused at that but of course he's gonna be like okay you men you dudes you're boys I own you uh, that means that you're women they're all mine I think that he's also the kind of maniacal person that would see them fall in love and watch them from on his throne and he would be all like oh you like that girl over there I see you guys falling in love I'm gonna wait and then I'm gonna make you watch me part her like the Red Sea I will test drive that bitch for you. There you go. You're welcome. Bow to my feet and thank me. That's the kind of thing I think he would do. And that must really suck. They came, that's what Negan did, I think, as well. That was, man, that whole Negan clip was raw, man. That was messed up. I will never forget that. And that poor man wanted to fight back so bad and he burned off half his, ugh. When Walking Dead was good, right? So it makes all the sense in the world based on the power he that he has shit. over these Kongs that he would sire most of the children. Also back to what I was saying, Kong, we've seen the birth of Kong in the graphic novel. This is when Kong loses his parents. He may have a lighter brown color, but he is definitely not a red baby, which stands to reason you have two black haired parents or gray and black, you're going to have a black haired or dark haired child. The only red on him is the blood due to his mom having just given birth to him in the middle of everything in chaos. His dad's a badass, just saying. This is terrible, poor guy. And so this is in line with the MonsterVerse universe. So now that we know that Kongs are usually born with darker hair, the red hair babies and having a red headed slave owner means that of course, most of those babies that we see, particularly the ones with red hair are his, which either means that in this universe, the red hair is more dominant or all of the Kong species have that recessive trait to that red hair, which opens up other questions such as why is Scar King the last of his kind? What happened to the rest of his kind? Is he from a species as an ancestor to all of these Kongs? Whether his kind was killed off, whether he's the last of his kind because of that, or he is just, just happens to be one of the last, just like Gia is one of the last Iwi, here he is. And he is making sure that he's not the last because he's breeding a bunch of himself into all of his concubines that he owns. I just found that very interesting. And what I also find freaking interesting is how did he even get control of Shimo in the first place? These Kongs come from a warrior nation of people who fought to the death, a skull crawler invasion and they are reduced to rubble because another one of their kind that just happened to outsmart them and get his hands on something that nobody knows how it works. And I like how in this movie, they portray Shimo as a sort of dog. She is Godzilla size, but she's clearly stupid. And I don't mean stupid in like a bad way compared to the apes or doesn't have the intelligence that they have because when she is free, we see Kong scratching her under her chin like a puppy, which that's all that is needed. Like she acts like a dog and she, you know, she has a mannerism. So can you see Kong scratching Godzilla under his chin for real now? I swear to God, if he tried that shit, Godzilla would give him a side eye and be like, okay, I'm gonna give you two seconds to recollect yourself because clearly you've lost a section of your mind. I'm gonna be gracious today because I'm a generous God and give you two seconds to find it for you take your fucking hands off me. That's what Godzilla would say. <laughs> now she is a different species than Godzilla, sort of. I mean, also Godzilla can stand on his hand legs. He does it one on all fours. Like both Godzilla and Kong one on two legs. Kong does a, 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 occasionally one on all fours, but Shimo is strictly a four-legged creature. So maybe in intelligence, she is more like a, a dog or an animal. So yeah, she's more like a pet. Uh, you can't really control Godzilla that way with a, with a piece of his body and 
you know, pain as the, as, as uh, the Skull King did Shimo. But I wasn't getting complete intelligence and mastermind and I know what I'm doing coming from her, which is surprising. So that would make people shipping her and Godzilla together even more uh, insidious. Because can you imagine Godzilla going to a woman who's who thinks she's a dog or maybe she spent so long being like, you know, I'm, I don't just saying she thinks that it's it's a dog in their universe or it's like a cow or something. And Kong's all like, could she could she coo under her chin? And she's like, ooh, 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 yeah, ooh, you know, and then Godzilla comes along and he's like, hey, what's up? And she's like, master, ooh, ooh, wagging her tail because that's how they portrayed her in the movie. And can you imagine Godzilla being all like, hmm, I guess I have an idea. Hey, want to play a game? That would be very fucked up. Would it not be? Just saying. So if Why for all you of you shipping them together, just, just, just think about that for a second. Why I know you're you not going to care that? either way because you could always rewrite her in your head, but that just, that whole thing just went out the window for me because that's just like, I know there's a criminality in the kaiju world the way there is in the human world, but still, kind of fucked up. You know why I pulled you over? Um, because I was speeding? No, because you're black. Anyway, I just found it very interesting, and I do wonder what happened to the rest of his kind. Scar Kings, anyway. And whose back did he unsheath like the freaking Predator in order to make that whip? Hey, hold up, 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 hold up. Scar King has been alive for quite some time because through exposition they mentioned that he was trapped in this subterranean realm, you know, hollow earth, under the earth, whatever, right? If he's been down here all this time, unless he recently enslaved the other Kongs, he must have been breeding with the female Kongs for a while. That implies that based on what we can presume about his age being very old, he must have a long list of descendants spanning generations, right? And if the children that we saw were all red-haired, or at least most of them were, it begs the question, where are the red-haired adults? Why don't we see any adults? By now, he would have had many kids that were adult age, right? And this notion takes on a more sinister meaning when you think maybe about it's, it. Maybe it's to, to make him look unique among all the other apes, because he's the only one with red hair. I mean, that... What was his name? Uh... Chiu, whatever, uh, the, the Mini Kong, he doesn't have wet hair. He has orange hair. And he's not a gorilla. He's a chimp. Like, the Squaw King is more like a chimp or a wingatang, but the Mini Kong is a chimp, not a gorilla. Because do you think the children who are red-haired are eventually killed off when they reach maturity so that he faces no competition and remains seen as unique but then why not eliminate them when they're young it still leaves the open question where the heck are the grown-ups who are redheads or who are red-haired hmm. insidious maybe some of those are they just not have red hair like the whole argument you said about the brown hair you know maybe he didn't mate with anybody else who had red hair if he's the only if, he, if he's in fact if he's in fact the only one with red hair Means that everything, everyone he met, every other AP mates with that has brown hair, does it? The 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 gene for red hair is not dominant; it's recessive in them, meaning that it doesn't show up. Meaning that maybe all of them came out brown-headed because that's the more dominant allele, like you said. You said it yourself. Yeah. Don't be like that. It can also symbolize brave, as we call it, gingers. This is a recessive trait. It is said that one to two percent of the world pop have this recessive trait. What this means is if you have someone with black hair or brown hair and they have a baby with someone who has red hair, more than likely the kids are going to come out with black hair. The black hair gene is stronger. The only way the kids are going to come out with red hair, more than likely each time, is if both parents carry the trait for the red hair gene. And there's only one Scar King. Oh, 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 April with hell. You said it already. You said it.